What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? Hi, Chief. Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. We're, we're missing awesome. Julie today, but uh, she has some- We are missing I know, Julie. I know. She had to go take care of her baby. So take care of your baby, Julie. We still, we still, we love you. <laughs> so uh, today we got a, a, a huge, wonderful panel of women, outstanding women that here, that took part of an outstanding film that gives us some insight on a very heavy topic that uh, may affect our service members, uh, but it, it may either- affect them personally or their family and friends have may, may have been affected by it. But uh, without further ado, Leah, please introduce today's guest. Chief, yes, sir. Today's guests are with us, courtesy of our friends at Better Noise Films. They are here to discuss their new film, Snow Babies, which shines a light on grim realities of substance abuse and how hope can lead to triumph. So please help me welcome director Bridget Smith, actors Katie Kelly and Paula Andino, and activist Alexandra Pesacher to Chief Chat. Hey. Hi. That was a mouthful, you guys. I know. How you good. ladies doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Awesome. We are super excited to have you guys on. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Share some love with our guests and leave any questions that you have for them. So we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a great time to start your watch party and enjoy this live interview with your friends. And then if you're not following us, you should, you'll know who's coming up next on Chief Chat. And we have great guests lined up all through the fall. So uh, Bridget, Katie, Paula, Alexandria, man, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this, this means a lot to the military community and for you guys taking some time out of your day to, uh, to, to talk about your film and, uh, you know, just show us some love is just always appreciated. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. So uh, to kick us off, can you all tell us where you're calling us in from today? Um, I found out a couple of you got, uh, ladies are local, so that's awesome. But uh, uh, tell us where you're calling us from today and uh, tell us how you've been doing uh, during 2020. We know it's been crazy for everybody. It has been crazy. I'm from Philly. So really? I'm a Philly girl. Born and raised in South Philly, Rocky Balboa territory. <laughs> that was awesome. my world growing up. That's mm -hmm. my comfort zone. So if we all start fighting, I'm like happy. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you got <laughs> this. Thinking, arguing, I got this. <laughs> um, but no, you know, it's been hard. You know, um, <clears throat> I've been extra militant because I'm with my mom, who's 81, got diagnosed with breast cancer right going into this, right going into oh, the lockdown. Gosh. So for me, yeah, it's not, you know, some people are easing up a little bit and they're over it and I get it. But for me, I just don't have that luxury, you know, cause I'm with my mom and I got to make sure she's safe. So it's been, it's been a rough seven months. I've definitely have literally maybe left the house, you know, a handful of times <laughs> yeah, <wow. laughs> to go shopping. <laughs> and my big outing was we had like a little COVID safe um, screening of snow babies, which was amazing and you know that was my one outing in seven months but it was probably the best one I could ever ask for so mm -hmm. I was happy about wow. that yeah, yeah no that Philly accent is definitely coming out I wanted to yeah it's it. gonna come out more and more yeah hey yo yeah. hey yo Bridget hey no. hey yo <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying chief <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm local to Dallas. I'm born and raised here in Dallas, uh, represent, hey. Um, <laughs> but I'm kind of with Bridget, yeah, a lot of people, I mean, because in Texas, a lot of things are kind of open, like you can go to the gym and like not even wear a mask. But like Bridget said, I'm still trying to be safe. I'm very close with my grandma and I see her all the time. So, you know, I don't, would never want to get her sick or anything like that. So we're still being safe. But like Bridget said, we had the premiere and it was like so so exciting I'm so glad that we had that it was so incredible but uh yeah that was kind of like one of my one outings or two outings as well <laughs> I'm just trying to stay safe still yeah I am also coming from the Dallas Texas area so I grew up in North Texas which is awesome I love Texas and um yeah, 2020 has been pretty crazy, but it's really given me the opportunity to spend like really great quality time with my family. So I'm so thankful for that. I've, you know, been able to get more in touch with nature, just kind of like 
work on myself and things are going so virtual with acting that that has been opening back up, which is amazing opportunities are coming back in. So that's great. But yeah, it's it's been a wild ride of a year. Yeah, it's been crazy, definitely. Yeah, I, I would echo that. So I'm also in the Philly area. I don't know if I, if I have the accent the same as Bridget, but I think it's <laughs> a little bit there. Um, but, Quarantine has been a little bit crazy. I'm actually um, five months pregnant right now. So I've also- oh, yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. So I've been quarantining just the same as Bridget where my, my big like fun event was the screening. Other than that, mm -hmm. I haven't really been going out too much. I've been kind of cornered in my little tiny apartment uh, for the past seven months, just like, I mean, everybody else. But it's been like, it's been great to spend more quality time with my husband. I mean, we're both working from home and I think- trying to find some of those little pieces of quarantine that are really positive um, has kept, I think, me a little bit more sane during all this. Yeah. Man, I, I, I just thought we were going to have like a gender reveal on Chief Chat. Like, that'd be, <laughs> uh, are you popping the blue over here or the pink over here? So, uh, you should have planned better, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, now congratulations, Alex, on that. Thank you. Well. And I, we, we got Philly versus Dallas. We got the Eagles versus the Cowboys. Oh, oh the gosh. Oh, gosh, Chief. You went there. Yeah, I, I did yeah. go there. I had to. That was daring. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Glad to hear that you guys are all safe and doing well uh, during COVID. And so let's just jump right in. Katie, um, your new film, Snow Babies, debuted in September during National Recovery Month. Can you tell us a little about the film and the message that you're hoping that people will walk away with? Yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> Snow Babies did premiere last month, which was so amazing because, because it is National Recovery Month. Um, but Snow Babies details the 16-year-old honor student named Kristen McCusker, who was also battling a heroin addiction. And it just really depicts the grim realities of addiction and how, you know, addiction doesn't discriminate. And, you know, we say often when people think of what an addict looks like, it's usually they have a very clear picture of what that person looks like. Um, just a stereotype, you know, they think probably low income, you know, they think maybe they don't have a supportive family around when in reality that couldn't be, you know, further from the truth. And with Snow Babies, our goal was to, to you know, remove that stigma of people thinking that it is only a certain type of person who has an addiction and really open up the eyes and, and shed a light on the fact that anyone can have an addiction and that addiction is a disease and it does not discriminate. Oh man, you are so right on that. And, um, you know, I've, I've experienced it firsthand. I was the superintendent at my previous base and uh, we had an airman that was uh, addicted to, to heroin. And so uh, just, you know, the, the struggle of, and you would think, you know, members been in the military for 10 years, you know, uh, has, has somewhat of a support system. Um, but man, the scary thing is, is just, you, you just wait maybe one day. You, well, it's scary to think that one day you might get a phone call that this, this member's dead or on the side of the road or, or something like that. Cause uh, the member did get arrested uh, a couple times and, and they were out of kind of out of it. Police pulled them over. They're on the side of the road. They got stuff in the car. So man, it, it that, that, that really hit home when um, when when I, I saw the topic and I, I got a chance to look at the trailer. I, I'm going to check out the movie uh, later on, but man, it's that is a very very deep subject. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, for, so Bridget, you know the the theme is you know this could happen to any family or your family or whatever the case may be. Okay. And you know that it isn't lost with me because uh, or Leah because me and Leah both have teenage kids. Yeah. So um, tell tell us what in, inspired the tour, the story. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, Mike Walsh, who's the screenwriter, he, he just wrote a brilliant uh, screenplay and his, his whole, it all stemmed from, he had a daughter in a high school there, a very, very nice suburban high school and a uh, student had died of a heroin overdose and they kept it hush hush. Nobody wanted to talk about it. They didn't want to bring that bad publicity to the, um, I guess the school and the area. And, and that's what sparked his interest in writing this. He just he just couldn't believe the approach was to not talk about it. And as a screenwriter, he thought, well, I'm, this is my way to talk about it. And so that's, that story alone was so uh, appealing to me because exactly what Katie said, it, it, I think people have an idea, they, they think in their heads if they create the perfect world, they send their kids to the best school. You know, they're working, loving parents and families and you're doing everything right in your mind. 
you are doing it right. Um, short of being perfect, which doesn't exist. And it still happens. And why does it happen? And with the movie, the importance of shedding light on this is to say, hey, everybody, stop for a second. Get out of your head that heroin has a look. That heroin, it means you're, it comes from someone from a broken home or someone from low income area. It's actually the complete opposite. I, I think there's more suburban cases um, then so it's just to get that stigma out of your head and to realize that it can happen to anybody and for, for parents to watch the film and realize that we didn't this story wasn't pulled out of thin air that although it's not based on one story it's inspired by many which means we spent a lot of time with families who lost loved ones Alex being one of them. Um, we spent time with um, heroin addicts uh, recovering. One was a uh, full-blown heroin addict, 16 year old suburban girl, very parallel to Kristen in Snow Babies. And if you watch and you can get rid of your disbelief when you watch the film and accept that the story we're telling is quite often the path that these kids go on and as hard as it is to believe, it's not, it, it's not a soap opera. This is based on our conversations with recovering addicts who have gone through this. And, and once you accept that, you realize how susceptible you are, how susceptible everybody is, that nobody's immune, nobody. Absolutely. And that to keep your eyes and ears open, pay attention and get in front of it because there's a small window to get in front of it. Am I right, Alex? There's a small window. If you don't get in front of it, you're going to lose control. You have to. You have to be aware. You have wow. to. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And, and there's there's no playbook or rule book on how to no, be a parent, not. on how to be a parent, and how to do yeah. all this other stuff. So, uh, but just, denial, denial, and right. stigma is what is going to make this problem so much bigger than it really should be. We and that's just the Surgeon General said stigma kills more people than fentanyl. Now think about that. Yeah. You know what I'm wow. saying? Think about that. So, you know, if, and, and that's, that's how we need to approach this and that's how we're going to make a difference for sure. Wow. And that's how we approached it with the film. It's hard hitting and it should be. Yeah. It should mm -hmm. be. <clears throat> wow. So Katie and Paula, how did you become involved with the project? And then what did being part of the film mean to you guys? Being, being a part of Snow Babies is, um, honestly, I fulfilled a lifelong dream of mine. Um, I've wanted to be an actress since I let, like literally could start talking, since I could start thinking. And um, being able to play Kristen, I mean, not only did I get to do what I love every single day on set, but also, you know, I get to help make a difference, which is the most important thing um, that I think is, is with the film. You know, we have the ability to make such a difference to save. It's just so incredible that I had the opportunity to play Kristen. Um, but as far as getting attached to the film, Audition came in like maybe I want to say 2016, 2017, around that time. Um, and I had auditioned for a secondary character, not, not the role of Kristen. Um, and after reading the full script, I just felt so attached to Kristen. And I felt like I could just bring her to life and just really do it justice. And uh, I ended up writing Bridget Smith, the director over there, uh, a little letter talking about how much it meant to me and how Mike Walsh did an incredible job writing it and how I felt that me and her could collaborate and just make you know this the film we could make it what it needed to be and we could make a difference together and Bridget ended up offering me the lead role of Kristen and so that, that's how I ended up getting attached to the movie but um, really it's a lifelong dream of mine to be a part of, of this film and I'm I'm so humbled and so grateful for Bridget and Mike like for the rest of my life it's it's so incredible truly. So I auditioned for Snow Babies back in December of 2017 and it was a very, very long casting process. I know that it was so much hard work for Bridget and our writer, Mike. I didn't hear back until August of 2018. So honestly, almost a year later. So, I mean, this process took a really long time, but it was so worth it. And then I had an amazing FaceTime call with Bridget and we clicked instantly. It was a great connection and I, I was her Hannah. So it was incredible. Like Katie said, it's honestly um, such a dream come true to even just play a part in this project. Um, I think that playing Hannah and Snow Babies gave me the opportunity to stretch myself as an actress, which I love a good challenge. But not only that, we were able to spread such a powerful message and tell a story that really needs to be told. So 
it's such a two in one gift. I'm not just doing something for fun, but then it's a passion project and it means so much more. Like this is so much bigger than us. And I don't think that anyone really could have played Kristen and Hannah the way that Katie and I did. Like there was just something there. And when it works, it, it just works. And it was such a gift, truly. It was a blessing finding them. It was a blessing. Yeah. I love these two girls and they, you know, the movie was going to live or die on them and it lived and, and will continue to live. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Y'all yeah. trying to hit me in the fields right now. Hold on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Jeep. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. So, Alexandra, I know that Snow Babies deals with a subject deeply personal for you, and um, you guys have kind of touched on this a little bit already, but can you share your story and tell us about your foundation? Absolutely. So my story is, in a way, the story of snow babies. Um, so I lost my brother to a heroin overdose back in 2017. Um, so that's really how I've gotten involved in activism for the opioid epidemic and raising awareness about addiction. So back in 2015, my younger brother um, finally came to my family and told us that he had a problem. Um, and watching the film, it was, it really brought me back to the time when you could tell that there was something, something going on, right? Um, and, and you knew something was wrong, but in your wildest dreams, and in my wildest dreams, I would never have imagined that it would be a heroin addiction that my brother had. Um, I mean, you, you think of, you think of anything, like maybe it's, it's something as so simple as, as alcoholism, which isn't, by no means a, not a serious um, um, problem that, that people do have, but I, I just never would have imagined heroin addiction. So um, the next two years was, was really just spent trying to keep my brother sober, um, help him find the best possible recovery that he could. And I would 100% echo what Bridget said about the stigma killing more individuals than the actual disease itself or even fentanyl, which um, is, is just causing so many overdose deaths more than we've ever had in the past. Um, because my, my brother, his, his greatest wish, and he always said this, was to be a normal kid, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I had an extremely normal upbringing, right? Like I, I'm not addicted. Um, I have two other siblings. Neither of them have any substance abuse problems. So, and I lived in a, a really nice suburb of Philadelphia. I, I grew up, I went to private school. Um, uh, I'm, I'm college educated. I mean, it's it, the story of Snow Babies is, is the story of my family. So um, after my brother uh, passed away of his addiction, um, something that was extremely Im important to me and my family was to raise awareness about what addiction was and, and to honor my brother's memory because so it, it's, it's a very isolating feeling to be an addict or to be the family member of an addict because society tends to shun you and, and tell you that it should be easy to, to stop doing that drug or you should just kick that person out of your house and then they'll hit rock bottom and they'll just stop doing whatever it is they're doing. And, and that's not the reality of it. There's so much science behind addiction. And I think in the past few years, even since 2017, I've, I've noticed that there is more knowledge out there. There's a lot of research being done about the genetics behind addiction and things of not that nature, but raising awareness, removing the stigma, and, and simply just saving somebody else's loop was really my mission and my family's mission. And that's how we started the Loops Here When Me Foundation, because I, I can't do anything for my brother anymore, unfortunately, which is obviously heartbreaking. But if there's anything I can do to have a conversation with somebody to get them to hear um, what addiction is and, and really like listen and be open to understanding it in a way they maybe haven't before, then it will all be worth it. We're, we're just, um, I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your brother, but absolutely uh, applaud you for, for being an advocate and, and being a person to, to spread a message to help other people because uh, it, it's, uh, I think we said something on my last chief's chat about uh, ex experience doesn't have to be the best teacher. Other people experience can be the best teacher. 
And so just, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just a noble thing that you do uh, and you and your family have done to, to keep your, your brother's legacy and also spread a message to help other uh, human beings. So that's awesome. Thank you for Thank that. You. Um, so uh, Paula, the, the music in the Snow Babies helps drive the story. Uh, tell us about the better noise artists who are featured on the soundtrack. Yes, so we have a lot of incredible artists featured on our soundtrack. So we have music from Bad Wolves, Corey Marks, 6AM, who did a huge collaboration on their song, Maybe It's Time. We've got Eva Under Fire, just a powerhouse of an artist, mm -hmm. um, and so many more. And all of their royalties, all of the artist royalties are being donated to the Global Recovery Initiatives Foundation. That's so awesome. it's helping people in recovery, it's helping people that are seeking recovery. And music in and of itself tells a story. So to have such an amazing soundtrack really elevating our film that was already strong on its own was just such a gift. And then all of these musicians they each have their own following. So we had so much more support around the film and to have their help getting the word out about Snow Babies was incredible. Um, and I think too, that if you really listen to the lyrics, it tells the story as it's happening too. I mean, not just what you're watching on screen, but you really listen and you are on these characters journeys with them. Absolutely. Well, you've had uh, Corey Marks and Eva Under Fire, they've both, uh, been guests on Chief Chat. We love them. So we were super excited to hear that they were part of this film as well. Awesome. So uh, Bridget, yeah, we, we kind of talked about 2020 and it being a challenge, but they're on the pandemic and you're one or two times of leaving the house in the past seven months. Uh, so so uh, how have you been able to spark interest in the film uh, during this time uh, when people aren't kind of gathering to watch movies together? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, everyone's like, this is a challenging time to release a movie. I'm like, actually, <laughs> it's a great time <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. to release the movie. Um, it's true, people are not gathering in movie theaters, but they're gathering at home and more than ever. Um, in fact, there's so much family time right now that uh, parents are watching movies with their, with their kids. And I, I know in the case of Snow Babies, I've had countless feedback from people who have watched it with their teenagers. And that's like a dream come true for, for me. And I think for everybody, cause we, I think that, that if you ask me, well, who's your ideal audience? I'd say parents and teens. And if they're watching it together, even better because after you watch the movie, you can't help but have conversations about it. it you, you'll see there are things in it you know, I had the privilege of watching it with my 16-year-old uh, niece, her friends. They know my niece. <laughs> <Liz. laughs> on set. I had my peanut on set. Um, she's adorable. But anyway, um, her and her friends and the, their parents all gathered at my sister's house. And I sat way in the back and watched it. And it was fascinating because they were screaming at the TV at times they were like, no, no, and just tell her, and oh my God, just listen. And it was so great uh, to see that because that's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I want. You know, even if you don't like the movie, you can't help it. It's going to evoke an emotion from you. Mm -hmm. And um, the number one rule when you're making a movie is don't be boring. And I don't think anyone could accuse us of being boring. <laughs> no, maybe no. So. At least I'm not boring. But um, but it it it's, it it evokes that that conversation. And and so to to market a film during a pandemic like this, I mean, for one, so that's a plus that people are home. It's out on video demand, so you could watch it in the comfort of your own home. You could watch it with your family, with your kids, with your teens you know, within reason, there's an age. But um, the, the other part of that is as far as um, uh, marketing, I could tell you, I don't like, I'll speak for all these ladies, we are certainly available. So every time there was an interview, or, you know, someone wanted to write an article, it wasn't really hard to get a hold of me, Katie and Pal, <laughs> and a lot of the other people, everybody was available and very excited to connect to other people and have conversations about this. And then the other side of that is, for people battling addiction, this pandemic is, is a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Everything mm -hmm. that we're told to do during this pandemic, to isolate, to not have contact, that's a complete opposite of what people 
um, going battling addiction and going through recovery. It's the opposite of what they need. So unfortunately, it's just a great time to raise that awareness. Now is the time you want to raise the awareness because with with COVID going on, we so easily tend to forget about all the people struggling, addiction, mental illness, all the people battling those things alone and, and to not forget them and to remember they're there mm -hmm. and they need help and they need support. So check, I, I, check I can't think of a better time, to be honest. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I always tell people when they talk about social distance, uh, it's more physical distance and not mm -hmm. social distance. That's right. You can still reach out. Yeah, you're absolutely take care right. Of your people, take care of your people. Reach out to your people, especially the people you love, man. Just, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, because people need need that, That's whether, they, whether they admit to it or not. So, mm -hmm. I agree. And it may be harder now without physically seeing people to, to recognize that they're struggling. You know, I mean, if, yeah. if everyone's isolating and a lot of the, you know, really where it matters is those people who live alone, who don't live with family members, you know, and so just checking on them to make sure that they're okay. Um, you know, is really what, really what we need. What we need. Yeah, I agree. And Katie, can you, what feedback have you received from viewers? I know Bridget uh, mentioned it just, just briefly a second ago, but how is your mes message resonating with folks? Um, wow. Yeah, I've been, I've been pretty overwhelmed with the feedback we've been receiving with the film, because like I said earlier, you know, we wrapped filming a year and a half ago. So there's been like a long lull of like, you know, we, you know, you don't, you never know if people are going to mm -hmm. receive it. And, you know, it's such an important film with, for us. And we, we wanted it to, to, to receive well with who it mattered to receive well. And like Alex said, you know, she has dealt with this personally in her own life. And she even said that, you know, Snow Babies is the story of her family, you know, and if you ask other people who have dealt with it in, in their real life, who have firsthand experience with dealing with someone, whether it was them or someone that they know and love, dealing with addiction, um, they let us know that we got it right. And that is what yeah. is most important to us. And it is just, it is just so humbling to see that snow babies does have the ability and it is it is saving lives like at this exact moment and it's starting all of these conversations and so really that's been what i've been reading and how it's been received and it is just so incredibly humbling because like i said as an actress a young actress you know you never know i mean to be honest you know you, you just you go and you you give it all that you have and you hope that it that it's what it needs to be and it, it really was just so humbling to see that um, it's receiving well and that it is starting conversations and that, you know, it, it, it does have the ability to make a difference. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Alex, uh, for our viewers that are watching and if they, if they are struggling with addiction or, or know somebody who is struggling with addiction, uh, what resources can they turn to for help? Absolutely. So... From my experience, I think that the best resources that you'll find are honestly small groups like mine, like the Luke's Hero Me Foundation. Um, little foundations and groups like mine have popped up in communities all over the country. There are so many of us, so many activists on the ground, and they're really the best resource to point you in the direction of the right rehabilitation facility for your loved one if they're ready for that level of help. Um, they'll know the best halfway houses. They'll know the best NA or AA groups um, for your loved one to go to. The, that's really, um, from my experience, the, the best place to get the most high quality facilities um, for your loved one to go to. Um, if, if that's not an option for you and, and you don't have a friend of a friend or the friend of a friend of a friend who can refer you to one of these groups, then SAMHSA, um, S-A-H-M-S-A, is a great resource. Um, I'm gonna read it's the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. And they have a hotline and online resources for you to find a rehabilitation center for your loved one. Um, and, and one thing I'll say on the side of the individual who is ready to get help is that when they do come to you and when they've identified that they're at a point in their life when they are ready to admit their problem and enter into some sort of treatment facility, time is of the essence. Yes. Um, it, is, it is critical that you help find that individual some sort of service as quickly and effectively as you possibly can. Um, and I, I know that's, that's really hard and, and on the part of, of the loved one who doesn't have the drug addiction, there's a lot of processing that you need to be able to do on your own, right? 
Um, but I would say in that moment, take action. Um, I'm sure the VA also has some wonderful resources. I did a quick Google search to see um, anything about the, the VA rehabilitation and drug therapy programs, and that does exist. Um, and, and then one thing I will just say is that I am saying you need to take action immediately, and that seems a little bit overwhelming, but I, I think that sometimes in the dialogue that we have, people do forget about the family members of the loved ones um, and the resources that they need. So uh, what, what I would say is the best way for you to be an advocate for your loved one and to really be able to support their rehabilitation journey, which is a long road. Relapse is extremely common. Um, this is not something that goes away, unfortunately, for most individuals. Um, I think it's about two thirds after they enter a rehabilitation center that will relapse. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lifelong journey. It is a commitment that person will have to make forever and everybody who is willing to be a part of that person's inner circle will have to make changes, but to, to be the best advocate possible, you should um, really just, just try and I would say educate yourself about what addiction is. Um, so you can really understand what the person is going through. I truly think knowledge is power and especially that is the case in the situation of addiction. It is such a complicated um, disease and topic and there, there is so much about it that doesn't make sense unless you're really in it or for families like mine who unfortunately um, have, have been through it and, and I am at the point where I am in my journey with addiction, but, but just, just do a quick search and just start to absorb all the knowledge that there is out there because there is a lot and, and that will help you process things a little bit better. And then again, the small community groups like mine that exist are always more than willing to talk with you about how you're feeling, anything you need. I'm always here, you can always reach out um, to me. We have a Facebook page, Luke's here on me. Um, we have a website, but make sure you're taking care of yourself because you cannot take care of a loved one in the throes of addiction unless you're taking care of yourself first. <clears throat> Great resources that you've listed off, you guys. Um, if you know someone who's struggling, like, like Alex said, you know, take action quickly. Yeah. <clears throat> so Bridget, yeah, where can our viewers go to watch Snow Babies and hear the soundtrack? Um, and then you guys have said, you know, part of the proceeds from the film and the song, maybe it's time it raises money for Global Recovery Initiatives Foundation. That's right. And in the UK, the Amy Winehouse uh, Foundation. Mm -hmm as well, which are both, you know, they both fund critical support services for people in recovery. And um, they're, they're real big with um, helping do away with the stigma as well. Mm -hmm. So um, very, very worthy causes. Um, so if you want to see the film, oh boy, it's on Amazon Prime, it's on Fandango, iTunes, uh, Google Play, Vudu, YouTube, and movie spree. So lots of options, yes. <laughs> you know, it, uh, lots of options. And um, for the music, I mean, it's on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, YouTube. And, and you know, again, the share of the profits and even the artist royalties uh, with, with Better Noise matching them um, for the soundtrack, again, are going to fund the um, GRI Foundation and Amy Winehouse Foundation in the UK. So, so again, just another thing to feel proud because not we're we're all so proud of this film and its message. But then to know that so so much of our work is now going to a, even a, a cause to help to help fight uh, this problem is is just something I think we feel even more proud. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. Yeah. So every watch, every stream, it benefits somebody in recovery. Keep that in mind. Excellent. And before we sign off, you guys, I wanted to just share some comments from the live feed. So Evelyn says, hello from Missouri. Congrats on your pregnancy. Oh. <laughs> um, lots of people are saying hi and good morning. People are watching from all over. Brittany Lynn says, hi, Bridget. So Aww, hi, Brittany Lynn. She's tuning in with you guys. Um, 
So I'm just scrolling. There's, there's lots of comments, lots of feedback here. And um, Brittany Lynn says the snow babies movie is hard to watch, but very important to see. So great. Thank you. There was another comment that said, hello, ladies from New York city. So I think that was Jamie Roberts who was tuning in as well. (laughs) So we just want to thank you guys. Uh, Looks like that snowbabiesmovie.com has been shared to the comments. So if you guys want to go and check that out, there is a link to it in the comment section. Great. It's awesome. Yes. So uh, ladies, it's been a true, true honor to have you with us today. Um, Like you said, uh, the movie uh, is is super impactful and it's it's there to help people and, and it, it can happen to us it, like I said right. it, it probably hard pressed to, to find somebody that doesn't have some type of connection to this movie uh, with substance abuse and and any, any type of issues that that people deal with on a regular basis so we definitely appreciate you for uh, Bridget for you know you know putting that film out there Alex for sharing your story uh, Katie and Paula for for for, for bringing the story to life uh, we definitely appreciate you for that. Uh, just know that it means a lot to the military community for you guys to just give us some time and, and show us some love because, um, you know, we, we, we have a hard job as well. And, and uh, but we, we take pride in what we do and you guys take pride in what you do. So we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And we'll show you love anytime. Oh, anytime. Mm-hmm. Literally, I'll yeah. come back. I'll keep showing it over and over that love. <laughs> <laughs> I will come visit anytime, Chief. I want to get you in South Philly. I want to get South you in Philly. Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for a cheese steak. All that. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm Maybe put an Eagles game. <laughs> We well, normally, we do normally travel to Philly uh, for the army Navy game, but yeah. this year oh. it looks like it's being played probably without fans possibly. Yeah, we they're, they're not we're waiting them. to hear. So. All right. Well, next year we're going to be there next we love year. Philly. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So we, we appreciate your time and we wish you all the best. And if you guys can hang out, hang on for a second. Uh, I want to get some information for y'all so I can give you uh, a token of my appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Keep that out. Bye, everyone.